Welcome to Sage Audio. Today we're covering how to master music start to finish. But first, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com to receive a free mastered sample of it. Optional, start with tape emulation. If you're making EDM, you should probably avoid this first step, but if you start with tape emulation, you can achieve a great tone with some mild harmonic distortion and soft knee compression. I find that when mastering digitally, this is a great way to make it sound slightly analog from the start. I'll drive the input a little bit, use makeup gain to keep the level, and maybe introduce a little crosstalk, and wow, let's take a listen. What about you and I then? Can we too find a way to align with each other? Let's move closer to a new history, find out what we can be together. Mm. Take my hand and we will conquer the world. This is our final chance. Subtractive mid-side equalization. Subtractive mid-side equalization is useful to both attenuate problem frequencies that I don't want amplified and control the width of my image. For example, I could use a high pass on the side image to make the lows mono and dip some of the side near the vocals. This will make the mid vocals cut through a little more. Let's take a listen. What about you and I then? Can we two find a way to Tube or transistor saturation. Now that my signal is balanced and has a little more character from the tape emulation, I want to add some more color in the form of harmonic distortion and subtle EQ curves. I'll use the Saturn II saturator, but feel free to use one that you enjoy. I like how this saturator also gently affects the frequency response and can be used to expand the stereo image as well. Let's take a listen. What about you and I then? Can we two find a way? Real quick, if you want to see exclusive advanced videos, have priority response to your comments, and get some other future perks, consider joining our channel and becoming a member. Optional, subtle compression. Next, I may want to add some subtle compression, not really to control the dynamics, but more to create a cohesive sound. For this reason, I'm going to use very subtle and smooth sounding compression with a longer release, and set the threshold to just above the peaks. With the internal sidechain, I'll exclude the lows from triggering the compressor to retain the kick and bass. Let's take a listen. What about you and I then? Can we two find a way to ally with each other? Let's history, find out what we can be together. Mm. Take my hand and we will conquer the world. This is our final chance. Upward compression. With my downward compressor handling the overall timbre, I'm going to use low level compression or upward compression to increase the level from the noise floor up. With this processor, I can increase the level of the quietest details of the track, making the master sound full and nuanced. It's best to use upward compression more than downward, this way you can increase the power of the master without unwanted distortion or squashing your dynamics. Let's take a listen. Additive equalization. Next, I want to increase certain parts of the signal to more or less shape the overall sound. Using an EQ, I can create various curves to boost parts of the frequency response. I'll use smooth bandwidths by setting the Q to one or two octaves and make subtle changes. Finding the fundamental and harmonics is a good start when considering where to center your bands. Let's take a listen. What about you and I then? Can we two find a way to
Real quick, if you want to see exclusive advanced videos, have priority response to your comments, and get some other future perks, consider joining our channel and becoming a member. Optional Stereo Expansion While I'm equalizing, I can again use mid-side processing to affect my stereo image. Granted, I might want to keep the image the same, but if some expansion would sound good, I can boost the side image's highs and mids, or I can boost the mid kick or vocal. These are just a couple of examples, but I find them to be good starting points when altering the balance between the mid and side images. Let's take a listen. What about you and I then? Can we too find a way to align with each other? Let's move closer to a new history. Find out what we can be together. Mm -hmm. we'll conquer the Use a limiter. The limiter that you choose is very important. It's gonna affect your signal potentially in an aggressive way. For this reason, pick one that's either versatile or suits the genre that you're mastering. The Pro L2 is a good option due to its algorithms and various settings. Increase the gain until you found just the right loudness and reduce the output by at least 0.5 dB. If aggressive attenuation is needed to achieve the loudness that you want, try increasing the value of your low-level compressor first instead. Let's take a listen. What about you and I then? Can we two find a way to align with each other? Let's move closer to a new history. Find out what we can be together. Mm -hmm. Take my hand and we will conquer the world. This is our final chance. Monitor and export. Use both an integrated LUFS and TruePeak meter to measure your signal before you export your tracks. The LUFS will indicate the loudness and TruePeak the amplitude of the signal once converted to an analog signal. The longer you measure the LUFS, the more accurate the reading. Also, be sure to remove these meters before exporting your master. Let's take a listen. What about you and I then? Can we two find a way to align with each other? If you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com to receive a free mastered sample of it. Also, join and become a member for exclusive videos and content. Thank you so much for watching.